morning. Welcome to the Barn Sunday Morning Services. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. You can get involved by calling the number that you see on the screen there or, or email us or text or whatever to and whatever questions or comments that you may have. And I can respond today. That's not true, though? No text. No text. No everything else but text. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How y'all? Um, where's Hermes? Oh, can you sit so I can see you? Okay, he'll be right out. Um, I want to talk about, I got all kinds of paper here because I kind of just threw everything together and I wanted to remember the important things. So forgive me. Um, Philippians 3.1, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And then there's another scripture that says, rejoice in the Lord all the time, all the time, all the time, 24 hours a day. Anybody ever heard that? You heard about that, right? Rejoice in the Lord. How many of you rejoice in the Lord? Nobody. One person for sure, and one is not so sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait for the mic. We we gotta. Will you raise your hand if I come to you? I may forget, but just hold on to the mic. You say what now? I just said I do every day. I think I I rejoice. You think? Yeah. Well, I mean, no. I know I do. It's just that I forget to. You know. You know. Sometimes I forget who I am. So. And what does it mean to rejoice in the Lord to you? Um, I, I thank him. You thank I him? I thank him. That's my way of rejoicing or, or singing or whatever. You know, oh, okay. You know, whatever. Okay. And you rejoice in the Lord all the time, right? Yes. All the time. What does it mean to you to rejoice in the Lord? Uh, to be filled with him and not with any of my own addictions or desires. Oh, okay. All right. Very interesting. Rejoice in the Lord at all times. Let me tell you why I came up with this. What made me realize it? And I have to tell you, it's from my own life. What made me originally realize, and I want, before I end today, make sure to, or somebody remind me to tell the folks how to rejoice in the Lord. Because I think the reason a lot of people are not doing it, I, got, I ran upon it accidentally within the last couple of months. And I realized I had not, I was not rejoicing in the Lord at all time. And I'll tell you why. Uh, well, you know, I thought about it in my own life. But the other day, uh, there was a report that we talked about on the radio. And uh, it was about this guy who, who uh, started, we got this from Business Insider. And it was from a guy, um, from the Mozilla Cooperation. You ever heard of Mozilla? Mozilla. Mozilla. Be quiet, Mozilla. A black man can't correct another black man. We, neither one of us are not sure what we're talking about. No, I'm kidding. You are very smart, Raymond. So what? Mozilla. And they created the, uh, oh, I have here what they, this guy, started this business, I think he was in partnership with someone else, two people, I believe, right? He started this uh, business where he, I'll let somebody else tell me who understands computer. Who knows what this business is about? Okay, right here. We all know Internet Explorer. It's, it's, another, for, it's another browser. You know how you get on the Internet and pull up web pages? Mozilla uh, Firefox. Oh, Okay. He, 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 he started, he yep. invented that. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? I don't know anything about it. Oh, you don't? But you just know what it is. He co-founded that. He co-invented that. And so he started his business. Back in 2008, he made a, a donation of $1,000 to Proposition 8 here in California. And Proposition 8 was the uh, marriage between a man and a woman uh, bill that we passed here in California. <laughs> Excuse me. It has since been overturned by the judge. 
where a marriage is between one man and one woman, but it was overturned and anybody can marry whomever, whatever they want. And, but this guy donated uh, $1,000 to Proposition 8 in support of the family. And uh, a homosexual group found out about it in 2003. And they went after this guy and they put it on their internet saying, do not use his computer thing. What is it called again? Browser. His browser. Do not use his browser, right? And so they put pressure on this guy and they, this guy had to resign from his own business that he founded, he started, he invented. And the radical children of Satan forced this guy to resign from his own business. I've never heard anything like that in my whole life. You know, they don't like the man because he supports the family. They should have just stopped using it. You know, not someone else, but they forced the man to resign from his business. Think about that notion in America. And um, he resigned. And at first he tried to fight it back a little bit. And we, he doesn't even tweet about it anymore, anything at this point. And I'm thinking, wow, these people are that afraid of the radical homosexuals to a point that they, a few, there's only 2% of those people, can force you to resign from your own business. So it has gotten worse over the years since they came out of the closet. It has gotten worse. Have you noticed that? It went to, we just want to be out of the closet. Then it went to, we want the freedom to go to school, whatever they want. We want now we want license to get married. Now they're changing the churches because a lot of the churches won't uh, stand up against it. They won't speak out about it in the church. They won't protest about it or anything. So they are winning. And it has a lot to do with the joy in the Lord. All right. Another incident was, well, I mentioned the uh, last, uh, some time back, I, re I mentioned uh, the governor of Arizona when she was forced to reject the uh, religious freedom bill, freedom of religion, where the folks in Arizona, if they believed in God and they had principles of God and they didn't want to serve as a gay couple or whatever, they had the freedom to do it. Uh, due to the pressure, she vetoed that bill and now if you're a Christian and you don't want to bake a, a gay cake, wedding cake, you have to bake it anyway in Arizona. So it has a lot to do with rejoicing in the Lord. Um, there was something, oh, what really, really, really got me about the children of God is that most, as we saw in here this morning, only two people rejoice in the Lord at all times. But I bet you all of you would say that you believe in the Lord, right? How many believe in the Lord? See, everybody believe in the Lord, but they're not rejoicing in the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And the scripture tells us to do that, rejoice in the Lord. I realize that we have gotten to a point with Christianity that we don't teach those things anymore. We don't remind people of those things anymore that we should be rejoicing in the Lord at all times, at all times. Uh, David in the Bible, uh, he saw Christ coming and he danced. He was so happy and rejoiceful. He danced in the Lord. He had that kind of joy for him. And I want to change the word joy to gratitude. What I realize is that most people don't have gratitude anymore. And I include myself too. Because sometimes I forget to have gratitude for all things. And I used to have gratitude for all things. I just forgot to be that way for some reason. I was grateful for everything. I really was. I remember being grateful. Just happy about even if I had little or much, I was grateful for it. If I got a job, I remember when I wanted to come to California. In those days, your folks wouldn't pay for your way to come especially if you were an adult, and I was an adult, and I wanted to come here to live, and I knew I had to work. So I went up to Indiana and got a job for two weeks because I wanted to come to Indiana, uh, California, and they were not going to pay for it. I would have to work and get my way. So I got a job. I was so happy. 
I got this job, worked two weeks and quit and came to California. I had that attitude, but I lost it along the way. And the Christian churches don't remind us anymore. Um, the other day, and this is not a put down because a lot of folks are like this, you know, so it's not a put down. I'm about to use an example. Uh, a couple of people had a, a birthday this week. One of my employees and another friend, they had a birthday. And this employee didn't tell nobody about the birthday, right? But here's what reminded me of the lack of attitude. Not that the employee didn't tell us about the birthday, but I told another employee, I said, oh, so and so birthday was this week. And they didn't tell us about it. And they said, can you blame them? And I'm like, wow, that, it just struck me the wrong way. Can you blame them for not telling about the birthday, right? And I, it just struck me the wrong way. But it was so forceful, <laughs> I had to just let it pass. But I realized we have gotten, who, who don't tell about your birthday when it comes? Wow. See that? Most people, wow. Let me just ask why not, all right, before I go on with this. Why not? <laughs> so you just don't say anything. It's just tiring. I'm just tired by my birthday. Okay. Why don't you, you don't tell when your birthday is here, right? Uh, no. Why not? I don't think it was important. Okay. And you don't, Patrick? I'm some, well, I know Patrick don't. Why not, Patrick? Um, Behind the headlines, one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven. Thanks for the setup. <laughs> and, no, um, I don't because, um, I don't know, I'm just a little bit shy about it, I guess, number one, and then... Um, I don't think that people would care that much if it's my birthday or not. Wow. And why not? Why don't you? And, and all of these are Christians that I'm talking to. These are not children of Satan. <laughs> I, I would. Uh, um, <laughs> why not? You don't tell people about your birthday, right? No, I was pretty much uh, uh, raised oh. not celebrating my birthday, so it was like any other day. So oh, okay. At that point, you know, also, it kind of sounds like tooting your own horn, telling somebody about your birthday. Um, it kind of seems like... Um, you, you want them to to celebrate uh, your birthday, so. Okay. Uh, How about you? Let me go here. Do you tell people about your birthday? I did not. Why? Why not? You know, I, as a grown person, it just doesn't make sense to. I, I just didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. And as a grown person, I mean, for if I was a kid, of course I'd do it. You know, right. kids can't help but do it. Right. But as a grown person, I didn't. I I don't really think it's a huge day anymore and okay that's it all right it's not a huge day anymore as an adult uh ask Hermes does he tell anyone about his birthday no why not um <laughs> I don't know that people around me would care that much oh okay so that's why you don't tell them okay do they hate you that much? They don't care about your birthday? Uh, you don't either? No, neither do I. Why? Because I don't think anyone cares. You don't think anyone cares. Uh, how about you? I don't want the birthday song. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell people because you don't want the birthday song? Yeah. What she's talking about, if it's, if it's someone here and it's their birthday, we sing... Happy birthday to them at the end of the service. So she tried to avoid that. Okay. And you don't either? That is correct. I Why don't uh, <laughs> tell anyone my birthday. That is correct. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's not important. Oh, no, that is not to you lying. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's, you're lying right now. What do you mean I'm lying? You hear everybody having a fit that knows you. What do you mean? So you say, no, you do not mention your birthday. I don't mention my birthday. So, but you remind me of your birthday months no, before we get there. I my do. birthday is next month. I don't on remember the, on ever the me reminding you of that. Really? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> Seriously. I don't remember that. You put it on Facebook and everywhere. What? You don't put it on Facebook? No, I do not post anything on Facebook about my birthday. Let me get some witnesses on this I one. I do not do that. I'm stunned. I do not do that. No witnesses because we're stunned in the silence. I'm telling you. Have you asked him the question three times yet? Oh, no. yeah. So you don't remind anyone that your birthday is coming. That's right. 
You don't remind anyone that is here. That's correct. You don't remind anyone that is coming. That's correct. We're at the cop when we need him. Okay, let me ask Patrick, does he tell people about his birthday? He not only tells us about his birthday, he wants us all to take him out for his birthday. I'm telling you, he picked the restaurant to take him to. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. So do you know when it is? Isn't, I, I think he just passed it. We try to forget. That is, so you say yes, he does tell us, right? Yes, twice. Yeah. How about you? Does he tell us? You know him as well as I do. Does he tell us his birthday ain't coming when it is? It almost here? Every, every bit of the way, he'll tell you. He'll tell yeah. you a month before, <laughs> a week before. And when it comes to the week before, he's telling you every day. Yeah. The day before, you got to remember. You're going to be there at 4 o'clock, right? <laughs> wow. So that is, go back with the mic. This is mind-blowing denial. Well, I guess I must have in my early years, I guess. No, I just last year. What? I did? <laughs> yes. No. I did not and, ask him he wanted to take me out. And if he's going to be on, on vacation out of town or something, he'll like, well, my birthday is coming up next week, so I may be out of town. Are we going to celebrate before or after I come back? What? We can celebrate it uh -huh. when I come back or after. Yeah, okay, whatever. He didn't mean to say he tells it in his early years. He meant to say that he tells it early in the year. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm stunned. And he was so self assured about it, I forgot he did it. We have text yeah. You text it and everything. Do you tell people about your birthday? Oh, me? Yes. No. Uh, let's get the mic. You don't? No, I don't. I'm sorry? No, I Why don't. Why not? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed, like Patrick said, a little bit. What are you it's embarrassed about? About getting any kind of attention, you know? And, Have you and, always been that way? Yeah, and, and then I notice people that are always saying, oh, it's my birthday. They, they want to make sure that you know it's a birthday next week or something. And I it feels like they're fishing for something. Yeah, they're fishing for a gift. Yeah. And the so, recognition. So <laughs> I, I don't do that because I don't want to do that. I don't want to oh. put nobody in that. Mm -hmm. All right. Franklin, how about you? You tell people about your birthday? No, I don't. You don't? Why not? Uh, it's a little shy. It's kind of, you know, why, what, what are you celebrating an old man's birthday for? Wow. <laughs> an old man. So the old man's birthday, he's just gone. Uh, yes, Hermes. Like I said, I usually don't tell people about my birthday, but this last birthday, um, somebody in the office knew about the birthday, uh -huh. and they did a nice little cake and brought in some food, and I kind of was at a point where I didn't really, it didn't matter that much anymore, but all the people that are saying, oh, it's not a big deal, it's nice once in a while to have uh, your birthday recognized. So then why do you try to hide it in? Like I said, I didn't think really anybody cared. Uh, why wouldn't they around care? Here. Why do you think people uh, because, wouldn't care about your birthday? Well, I've never, I mean, there's never been any uh, cakes or anything like that in the office, so. No, why do you think people would not care about your birthday? I mean, that was just the impression that I got. You got that impression that people, are you that mean? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the reality. Here's what, do you tell people about your birthday? Right here. She were, huh? Ruth and Robert? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her husband says she's worse. I tell him about my birthday, and I buy my own present with his credit card. <laughs> <laughs> and I make sure he wraps it for me. <laughs> no, her family, she, her family has a tradition where they, they'll tell you what they want. Oh, man. I'm not so... I'm not so she's conditioned. But I'm not so against that because if you buy a present, it's nice to know you're getting the person what they want. And nowadays, it's kind of hard to know what people want since they have everything. And this is like my immediate family. And we also have a rule, like we don't like to give each other gift cards. So it makes it more important to say, there's this sweater, the size small, right. this color. That's right. So I'm not against that. Um, oh, and I put it on Facebook. You do? <laughs> no, well, Facebook. Hey, Jesse, Facebook yeah. has an app 
where it forces it pretty much keeps asking you until you punch in your 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 date uh-huh. and so it'll automatically alert everybody that's your friend that your birthday's coming up and then everybody posts on your so everybody probably here that's on Facebook has they're using that that uh app right. where it alerts everybody about it's your birthday on Facebook wow and that's every, amazing and every year my parents call me and they sing me happy birthday good right on how about you? Do you celebrate your birthday? I, I do oh, I'm that. sorry. Wait for the mic. I, I do that. It's weird that you ask that because I've thought about this a lot, right? And I realized it was keeping me from telling everybody, believe it or not, it was pride because it's very humbling to be in front of a bunch of people telling you that they like you. And that's why you don't tell that's, anyone? Uh, for a long time. And I decided, well, that was crazy. And I realized I was being egotistical and weird about it, not telling people. Oh, because oh, I enjoy, I, I'll tell you what I do. I, with people that I know, I call and leave them on their voicemail. I sing them happy birthday. Yeah. And that's humbling, too, because, first of all, you know you sound terrible, and you're leaving it on a voicemail, and they can't, you can't erase it, right? <laughs> right? But it works so well. Yeah. And why not accept, why not have the gratitude of, of other people? Um, in this organization, one of my parents died, and I never told anybody, right? And you all sent a card. And it was very touching. And I go, all right, uh, it's only pride keeping me from doing yes, this. Sir. It's all it is. It, yes, isn't, sir. it isn't some, why should I bother? Why should people bother with me? Why do they care about an old white guy? All this other crap. Yeah. Nope. It's all about pride. Amazing. Uh, Mary, why do you think people don't care about you enough so you don't tell about your birthday? Why wouldn't they care about you? Uh, why wouldn't they care about me? I, why is it that people don't care about you? I, I just don't uh, feel important to people. You don't feel important to people. You feel unimportant to people. Right. What if, describe that feeling of unimportant. Mm, just that I'm not special. I'm just ordinary. and you just old Mary walking and around. Right, and, and people don't appreciate <laughs> what I have to say or what I have to offer. So that makes me feel unimportant. Wow. And so are people acting that way with you? Uh, yes. Wow. I want you to take a class from Robert how to tell folks about your birthday. <laughs> uh, okay. Even though he doesn't remember right now, he doesn't. But uh, That's what you think. I want you That's to what you think. take a class with it. Yeah, well, yeah. like for instance, this about. year I said <laughs> sure. about my kids, I said about my kids, I said, oh, I'm going to see if they remember my birthday. Well, fortunately, they all did. See you there? You know, uh, <laughs> Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord all the time. Job taught in a... In a Job 7, 1 through 21, Job talked about how, he, he talked about how unhappy men are in life because they are so wrapped up in their issues of life that they forget to rejoice in the Lord because they are so consumed by the world and their problems. Whereas if they were to rejoice in the Lord at all times, they wouldn't think about the world around them and they wouldn't be wrapped up in their problems. They will always have gratitude and be grateful for what God has done for them. But they're so wrapped up in their... Let me see, can I read it? Uh, uh, Job described the life of men. Uh, he found it full of every kind of afflictions. And the reason for that, because they were not rejoicing in the Lord, they were so wrapped up in their problems and afflictions around them. But if they were rejoicing in the Lord at all times, they would not be concerned about that at all. They would never even focus on their problems. I think people who don't appreciate their birthday uh, and will have, just think about this, God brought you uh, another to another earthly year. The whole year went by you're alive, you're not hungry, you have a roof over your head, you have a job, you have your life, you have a sound mind, you're living in the earth, and on your birthday, 
you show a lack of gratitude for that by keeping it to yourself. You know, you're not even grateful to God that he allowed another earthly year in your life to happen to show that appreciation to the environment around you because you're not grateful. You don't have that grateful, thankful attitude. Do you realize that God wakes us up every morning and we're still breathing and alive and healthy and all is well? It's he who causes us to make another birthday. And I don't care if you're one year old or 90, 900,000 years old, we should have that gratitude that the Father allowed us to see another year. And when you share it with someone, it's almost like a testimony, where well, it is a testimony that you have made another year in your life. Kids know this. They celebrate birthdays. Now, we spoil them at a certain point with gifts and kind of take away their, the, the naturalness of celebrating the purpose of celebrating it. It's like an appreciation that God is with us. And he loves us, he loves us enough to give us another year in life. Because you couldn't, it wasn't for him, you would not be here to even have another birthday. And so it's, it's a lack of gratitude. I know people with jobs. My allergy is bothering, the allergy is bothering me right now in the springtime. I know people who have jobs and their attitude, and I'm not just talking about at my company, I'm talking about everywhere now. Their attitude on the job is not gratefulness that they have that job. You know, that God blessed somebody to say yes to them when they filled out that application and they made a promise to that person, if you pay me X amount of dollars, I'm going to come to your job and make sure your business work. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to do my best in my department at least to make sure this thing works and I'm going to give you a good attitude because you're giving me a way to take care of myself. Is a way of giving and receiving. Most attitude people attitudes on jobs are nasty nowadays. Just awful. And maybe they do work for the union, but even if you work for the union, you're responsible for your attitude on a job. Uh, uh, the union don't make you develop a nasty attitude. It doesn't make you. I mentioned these two cases: the man who had to leave his business that he created and give in to the sinners the children of Satan. And we just sit back and watch that happen because we don't have the attitude that God gave us the freedom to live in America and we have the freedom to start a business, to be creative, to uh, support a, a family-oriented organization like Proposition, uh, uh, what is it, 208? Eight. These people fighting for the order of God. This man donated, and now his freedom has been taken away from him. And because we don't have the right attitude with God and rejoicing in all things, we are not standing up for this guy either. And we'll, we'll, we'll speak out about it, but we're afraid. A lot of people are afraid of losing their jobs or doing this or doing that, giving in to the enemy. And it's due to the lack of gratitude about the little things in your life. I was at the car wash the other day, and I waited to get my car, and I looked up at the sky, and I'm like, wow, the sky is so nice. Do you know I forget to look up at the sky? I don't look up unless I'm in an airplane or something for the most part. But growing up, because we didn't have light, street lights and things were simpler, I would look up at the sky and have a great appreciation for the stars or the blue or the, or the clouds or things like that. I would uh, appreciate that. But I lost that along the way. If you don't have joy in the Lord or attitude of, of gratefulness in all things, your life is dull. Your life is dull. Uh, Job said that uh, if I have a joy and I put gratitude, it's not in the Lord. Not only do we not rejoice, or be grateful, uh, oh, I put, I put attitude, and, I mean gratitude and rejoice, but he said, if our joy is not in the Lord, 
uh, or we are grateful, it, it, we would never be grateful with anything. The possibility is we would never be grateful or have joy about anything. If it's not in the Lord, you're not going to ever be joyful about anything. That's why it's so important to be grateful, to have joy in the Lord in all things, because if you don't have it in him, you're not going to have it in anything. It'll come for a minute and it's gone. But if you establish that with him, with God, be grateful for all things, then you'll have it. We walk by, we walk by trees and birds and bees and flowers and things like that. We never really pay attention to those things. They are alive. They are put there by God. We're all connected to it because we were created from the earth. Our bodies are. We're connected to those things. How often do we really pause and give gratitude to those things, about those things? Isn't that amazing? Yes, Mary. I, I, I do um, enjoy the elements and birds. I mean, every, where I live, I always put water out for the birds because I love to hear them singing and they need water. And, you, and if you had that kind of joy about everything, it wouldn't matter if somebody else liked you on your birthday or not. You would be showing your appreciation to God. You would be an expression of that, and that would encourage others to be the same way. But Satan told us, oh, don't do that. It's ego. You just want a present. Somebody's going to think that you want a present. Oh, be shy about it. All the excuses I heard today. Be shy about it. Why celebrate your birthday? Nobody likes you anyway. It's not for those reasons. It's to show appreciation for your creator and what he has done for you. His mercy. Uh, the way to become joyful or have a great attitude about life is, do I have anybody here? Nobody's grateful for life or everything, right? Yeah. Nobody. So you can't tell me how to do it then. Y'all yeah, ain't grateful for everything. You hide your birthdays. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> a gratefulness is not something you keep to yourself. It's everything that God gives unto us, we give it out to others. Everything. Otherwise, what's the point of having it like if you're going to keep it to yourself? Like, oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you. But don't let anybody else know. <laughs> I don't want to be that kind of expression. But that's because they know. You were sneaking around here all week. Didn't tell anybody. I don't want to tell you guys because I don't want to go up front and say happy birthday. It's like too many birthdays. It's like, I know. <laughs> but don't let Satan give you that excuse. I'm telling you, let that darkness go and just let the light shine through everything because all things are from him. All things, the good and the bad, he allows them to happen because he loves us. And he wants us to overcome them so we can be that expression of love, that there's nothing that can keep us down. There's nothing that can destroy us if you have the joy of the Lord if you have the right attitude. But go on, you say you do have that so in did you. did Jesus go around telling everybody his birthday? I don't know. No. I, I don't know. Uh, so much has been left out the scriptures, I don't know. You know, but even if, let's say Jesus did not do it, and I'm not saying go around and just tell everybody. I'm not, I'm not saying that kind of, I don't want you to be extreme in things, but I just want you to know God loves us he gives us all things, and he wants us to be that expression so we can encourage the rest of the world. He wants the blind, the ones who are blind to see the light in us, to see that joy no matter what's going on in life. That's, what, that's the point I want to make about this. Yes. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, but don't let Satan tell you, well, he tell you, go around and just tell him, Jesus didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I, I appreciate my birth and I appreciate another year. Yeah. But just because I don't tell anybody about it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it. Okay. Good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Let me say here first. Oh, wait for the mic. Wait for the mic. I'm sorry. For a couple of weeks now, I've been thinking about gratitude. 
especially where I came from. Yes. And where I'm at now from where I used to be. And uh, I remember coming to a le uh, one of your talks last week, or I don't remember exactly when, and you mentioned something that sort of woke me to uh, gratitude. Yes. You know? And to be grateful for what I have. And so every day now, I thank him for what I have. Yes. Because I had nothing, you know? And uh, uh, I, I just want to learn to be more grateful. I'm going to tell you how. And more gratitude. I'm going to tell Attitude you how, gratitude. and it's going to blow your afro off. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have a question. So people that are very shy or timid, are they egotistical? Uh, yes. They're very judgmental. Okay. They're very shy people. Watch out for... Watch out for the shy people. They will destroy you. They're like snake in the grass. They're very judgmental. I was talking to a, a guy who was shy. He, his whole demeanor is, is about shy. You know, you can tell he's insecure, right? And so I said, what's wrong with you? He's like, I'm, I'm shy. I said, no, you're not. You're the meanest, most judgmental person, in, one of the meanest judgmental person in the world, right? I said, you judge everybody. He said, yeah, I do. <laughs> He's judging and putting down everybody, not realizing that's keeping him down. I said, you got to cut that out. You got to be yourself. Just open up and get it out there. You'll be fine. But you're holding this stuff in, playing the shy role, and people are saying you're shy, but you're destroying yourself. Because it's that judgmental. He's so traumatized by his parents. And he's so angry, he can't function. So he put on a demeanor. And in that, it looked like he is protected. You know, people won't bother him and all that kind of stuff. No, that is not good. They play possum. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you have those ones that you know are trouble. Both are bad. Both are bad. Um, did I see a hand somewhere? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, Patrick, first. The, the perspective is interesting that it's about, it's not, a, the birthday isn't about us. Right. So that's what you're saying. That's, that's right. That's an interesting perspective because I think that's part of what gives me and other people trouble with it because we, we think it's about us. It feels kind of silly. Yes. Because it's like, look at my birthday. You know, it seems kind of ridiculous. Right. But in the way of being grateful for another year to God, then you're celebrating. It's a different perspective, sure and you is. wouldn't feel ridiculous celebrating it or telling anybody about it. That's right. you got to remember that our ways, our thoughts, and our ways are not like God's thoughts and ways. He doesn't see things the way that we see them at all. We are, we are, we are in the process of overcoming darkness, coming back into the light. We are ego-driven because we are so judgmental and hateful that everything seemed, you know, wrong. We, but it seemed right. All wrong seemed right to us. And it's not God's way. But when you start to overcome that, you start to see. One of the reasons that we as human beings act the way we act is because we have forgotten the way we, we have forgotten God's grace. We have forgotten God's mercy. We have forgotten our relationship with him. When you come into the world as kids, you know that relationship with God. But because we are so traumatized and so messed up, we soon forget that way. And so we forget what our relationship with him. But when you start to pray and get serious about seeking him, he, all the things that he does is bring you back to remember your relationship with him. He brings you back to remember your relationship with him. And when he breathes you back, it humbles you. When he calls you to remember your relationship with him, it humbles you. And you start to have that gratefulness and appreciation for all things. And the way to get that rolling is that you need to pause and remember what God has done for you up until this moment. The situations he brought you through, the things he did for you, Things that could have been that didn't happen to you. Your friends are dead and gone. You, you know, you're not on a skid row. He's, 
He, and you'll remember, for some reason, he'll cause you to remember that he has always been with you, but you just don't reflect on it. You forget about that. And caught up with all your problems of today, you don't remember. But if you want to be humble, you got to remember what he has done for you, that he brought, how far he has brought you, and the situations he has brought you through where others didn't even make it. But you don't remember those things. I would think about some stuff that growing up and all, you know, up until now, I'm like, wow, I forgot that he was always with me. And it's like the animals, they, if you notice the animals, they never worry about anything. They're always rejoicing. And it's because they don't have an intellect, but he gave us an intellect. And that intellect has got us messed up. We're so caught up in it in the wrong way, it brings on grief and everything else. That intelligence. We got to come back to his intellect instead of this ego intellect. I'm telling you, it's all there. He wants you to be grateful for all things, even the things that we think are bad. He wants us to be grateful for that because he's allowing it to happen to get our attention and bring us back home. I'm telling you, but if you're not focused on that, you're not going to get it. Everything we do should be rejoiceful for. We should rejoice for it. And, I, and again, you're right, Stephanie. I don't mean go out, oh, you know. But you'll see how to do it. Yes, Pat? You know, one thing we were talking about Thursday night, and it really, really was a great meeting, but you're, you're touching on a little bit of this today, too. When we were young, we had a relationship with God, and somewhere we lost it. Yes. And well, I realized that when I tried to regain my relationship with God, I, I tried different things, such as, you know, I tried techniques of prayer. I tried different types of, you know, reading the Bible, whatever it was. Yeah. But it wasn't directly towards getting the relationship back. You know, I was saying I kind of made bargains in different ways. I'll give you an hour of prayer, God, if you'll let me be free. You know, yeah. but I wasn't ha going to the prayer as a natural thing because in and of itself it was good. I just said, I'll give you the prayer, give me my life back. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. but lately, um, even since the meeting, I've noticed I've, I'm kind of letting some of the work, the spiritual work go, so to speak, instead of, you know, I got to sit here for this length of time, pray, I got to crack a book and read this chapter i got to do this. It really wasn't working in a certain kind of way. Yeah. And even if I have to pray a little bit of time, because I was doing a lot of it out of fear. I have to pray an hour, otherwise I'm not going to be whatever. And so lately I'm just kind of willing to just pray a little bit or whatever, just enough just to have the relationship with God and leave it at that. Don't push it any further. Yeah, don't say, oh, I didn't pray for an hour. I'm going to be in trouble. No, oh, it, was, it, it was all based on fear, and there was yeah. so much, and we talked about that, that my life has been built on fear. Yeah. I have to eat these foods, otherwise this is going to happen, or whatever. Oh. And it's just, it's just really weird, but, <laughs> you know, I'm glad to start to see that. Right on. I, uh, one of the things that we talked about on Thursday night at the men's meeting, I asked the question, I don't know how I started out, uh, about their relationship with God and how did they, you know, were they taught about God when they were children? Were they taught, taught about religion and stuff like that, right? And if, because what I noticed is that the people who are into the God thing are suffering the most. They are filled with guilt, fear, worry, anxiety, because, and they're all like, they're not sure about prayer, they're not sure about anything, and they're into the Lord. And I wonder, why is that? You know, if we are into God, we are children of God, why are we suffering the most? They're dishonest, they're bite biters, they won't take each other and help each other through situations. They are hateful, and they're all into the Lord. They've been taught by, you know, about God. And I realize religion, and I don't blame religion for it, but one of the worst things that has happened to us, to mankind, is to be taught religion. It's the worst thing because it put us in a block, in a box, and Satan is using that against us. 
if they had, if we had good parents who loved God with all their heart, soul, and might, they were married and they were living that life by examples and let us watch it while we were growing up, we'd be better off. And yes, when we had questions, answer those questions from the parents, we would be better off because we would have held on to our realization, our relationship with God for the most part. Then we would have repent as an adult for the little sins we committed. We'd be free. But from when they started teaching us about religion, teaching us what the scripture said, and teaching us what the scripture meant, we locked into it, our intellect locked onto that, and it brought on nothing but destruction. And if you look around you, look at your own life, look at the Christian life, nothing but destruction. That's why a man can lose his business, because the Christian life is based on intellect of the world and of the scriptures rather than revelation from God. And it was interfered with when we first came into the earth. I remember that I used to, I would be walking down the road before that I really knew the Bible or learned the Bible. I would hear the adults say, if you ask God for anything, he would do it. I just would hear them say that, my grandparents and others. And if I, I remember asking God for things, you know, let it thunder, let it lightning. And, and with no doubt, it would just happen. It would just happen. I, I remember saying, let it rain one time. It was a bright, hot, sunshiny day in Alabama. Walking down the road, I heard the Christians say, you ask God to let it rain, it would. I said, you know, God, if, you know, if it's true what they're saying, let it rain right now. And it just rained down the road in front of me. It didn't rain on me. <laughs> it just started, a shower came, and it was done. I was like, wow, that's nice. Because I, I had not been so trained and taught and, and, and given all this fear. Because when you're taught about God, it doesn't work. When you discover God, it works. And Christians are not discovering, they're learning about. We have a teacher inside of us, and he will reveal all things to us. It's not happening. Who disagree with me about this? Nobody? Why don't you disagree? Oh, good, a disagreeer. Well, a little, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I do think that I took a journey through a church and then through the Bible, and there was, there was a lot of learning, but there's also a discovery as well. So it, was, it was a bit of both, I feel. But a lot of discovery, definitely. Yeah. A lot of revelation. You want, you, want, you want to get to a point where you get all... Now, when you read the scriptures, you're supposed to just read them, but don't let Satan interpret them based on... Because Satan is going to interpret them based on what someone has already said about them. And all he's going to do is remind you what that means. If you can avoid that, you'll be fine. You, you, you get the knowledge... And you, um, there was a guy uh, who died down in, uh, uh, he was in the military, and he died uh, recently. Um, he was captured while fighting in, uh, was it Vietnam? Afghanistan or Iraq? No, somewhere, one of those war, war, war something. Oh, the same one that John McCain was captured in. Oh, Vietnam. Vietnam. And he was there for a long period of time. He was locked away by himself, and the guy went through hell, right? But that guy came out one of the most, one of the wisest men that you ever want to meet. He said that when he was put into that encampment, he believed about God. You know, he had faith in God, but when he came out, he had knowledge of God. He knew God. And that's what we want. We want to know him, not about him, not religiously about him, but we want to know God. And with this good attitude, with this joy at all times, you will come to know God. He's, he wants us to know him. You will come to know God. But with your attitude now, you might well hang it up. The only thing you're going to know is sorrow. <laughs> Nothing. You're not going to have any joy. And joy for a moment is not joy. You know, you get a job. Yeah, I got a job. And it's gone. That little joy is gone. Ain't that something? Uh -huh. 
It's real easy, too. It's not difficult at all. You got to just humble yourself and commit to him. You got to reflect on what the Lord has done for you, where he's brought you through. And I'm sharing this because tough times and good times have brought me to this point. And I'm at a point now, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but I'm grateful for all things. Those little things I'm grateful for. Um, we're doing a reality film. Ron is doing, doing it for us at no cost. He came out of nowhere. From nowhere, there was a Ron. And he said, hey, how about... You know, I can do films and things like that. Let's do a reality thing. And I thought about that the other day. I'm like, wow, I'm going to really jump in here and make sure I work with this man, give him everything he needs to make this thing work. This man came out of nowhere. That's a gift from God. That's a re- we should appreciate that and, and make sure it works because it just came out of nowhere. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. The school that we started, we getting teachers coming out of nowhere. We have a teacher that's teaching craft out there right now. What, that what you call it? And this guy just came out of nowhere. He's smart. He's into it. He's commit. He knows what he's doing. He just told me about some ideas. I'm grateful for that. That came from nowhere. We didn't have that when we first started. Thought about starting a school. It it came out of nowhere. It came out of the invisible became visible. Okay, let me do this. I got to move real fast because I see many hands. Uh, yes, real fast. You said earlier we should appre- appreciate uh, the de- uh, our birthday, but can a person, uh, a person whose char- uh, character is so, uh, is so perverted and corrupted, can appreciate uh, even, uh, even the moment? No, that's why you must be born again. Mm-hmm. But don't be mad about being corrupt and all that. Just know that you are. And God would take care of that, too. Thank you. Don't judge yourself for that. Yes, Ron. I, I do have a lot of joy in what I do because I, you know, to the point where it can be kind of annoying to some people, <laughs> especially my wife and daughters. Yes. But I constantly just want to talk about God and about the lessons and, you know, what, what he means in our life. So, I, it's, it's, Right on. And even with friends, I'm like, I don't know if we should see him because all I'm going to do is talk about God. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, there is a... You know, there is a right way to do that, too, because there is a way to communicate with your friends without preaching to them or always pointing the fingers at them. You know, first, you should be living that way. They, they should be able to see it in you and your attitude because those Christians can mess you up. Thus said the Lord. Oh, you hate your mama. You hate your daddy. You hate this. Right. That's not the way God does it. He wants you to be a living example of it. And people want to know, and then you can minister to them. You don't want to pounce people on the head all the time. Yes, Hermes. Question from on Twitter from the Angry Jarhead, and he wants to know, is that how God allow, allows us to be changed by rejoicing in tribulation and trial? So, I'll repeat that. I'm sorry. It's he wants to good. know, is that how God allows how, what us is? to be repeat changed? Repeat the whole thing for me. Well, that's his question. The, you, you, regarding your topic, discussion on uh, rejoicing and tribulation, right. yeah. he wants to know, is that, isn't that how God allows us to be changed? In By rejoicing, is that how God allows oh, us to be changed? Oh, in tri- when times are rough? We, God, he, he allows that to happen for the stubborn people, for the ones that, you know, just don't want to just naturally wake up. But you don't have to suffer like that to wake up. All he needs is a seeking soul, you know. Seek first the kingdom of God in his right way. He'll wake you up just like that. But some people are so stubborn and ego-driven, he allows those uncomfortable things to come. It's like a parent correcting you, giving you a whooping. So he allows that to come in hopes in those things they will wake you up and, and cause you to cry out to him. Because it is God's desire that all people receive salvation. He wants all of us saved. He wants, that's his desire. So he allows certain things to happen so that you can cry out to him. And so that's why he loves us so much, you know. So uh, I saw another hand. Yes, ma'am. I just want to share something. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait for the mic. I'm sorry. You said when you ask God for something that happens. Yes. Does it? 
So I just want to share. I know I shared it in a woman's meeting. Yeah, make a long story okay, short. Okay, uh, we we were coming to the meeting, a women's meeting. Yes. And it was a lot of traffic, and we left late. Yes. And so m my friend said, "We're never going to make it. We're never going to make it." And and I felt her frustration, you know. And so I told her, "Yes, we will. Watch." And I said, "God, please open up the road." And before you know it, there was no cars in the freeway. Yeah, and I we heard. Made it here in time. Yes. And I was like in awe. Yeah, I heard about it. that. Was good. Um, what I suggest is that you become mindful of God. Mindful, be aware of Him at all times. Now I don't mean strain your brains and all that kind of stuff. I just mean be simply be aware of this very moment. He's right here, right now. We be mindful him, of him at all times, and then Satan cannot get in there and deceive you. He can't get in there and make you believe a lie, make you feel bad, and cause you to destroy yourself. And then you will start to be grateful for all things, for all things, no matter what it is. You won't have a negative opinion about anything. Yet you would see right from wrong, you would do the right thing, you get to the point where you will resist wrong things. You will get to that point and you're going to be amazed. But you got you to gotta have the joy of the Lord operating through you. And I don't necessarily mean just jumping up, hooping and hollering and shouting stuff. You know, if that's what you do, go ahead and do it. But I just mean have that God mindset. Be mindful of him instead of a Satan at all times. Last word, Pat. I was just going to say, we as human beings tend to want drama, you know, yeah. us through this tribulation and make this big deal. I remember as a kid, these things were simple from God. That's right. They just show you little things. That's a very good you point. You know, it's not all this stuff. It's just If you beauty. notice, kids don't have drama in their lives, and they appreciate God. When he wants us to be as a child, he wants us to remember him, come back to him, it's like going back home. You don't need the drama. That's a setup. You do not need the drama to celebrate God, be a part of the Lord. That's a world, that's worldly knowledge that you've been lied to about. I'm telling you, it's a setup. And again, there's nothing wrong with religion. I'd rather have religion around me than non religions because those folks are totally out of control. But I'm just saying, just learning about religion instead of discovering is what have us in bondage as slaves. All right? Forget all you know, and then you will discover. We need your financial support, folks. We don't get money from the government for any of our programs, our church service. And if this is helping you at all, give back to it so that we can do more. It costs money to do all things. So I'm asking for your tithe and your offerings. Um, the, uh, call the 800 number. I believe it's the address on the screen somewhere there. 800 number. Uh, okay. The, everything is on the screen there for you, but 800 number, 800-411-2663. And you can make a donation there or go on the website at bondinfo.org. We do not get money from the government. We have our Sunday morning services, our women's and men's meeting, our school private school for boys and girls, grades 1 through 12. Uh, excellent, excellent, coming together very well. We do our radio show, and all of these things are done because you help us to do it. So I ask for your donations and your tithes and offerings, all right? We need your support. Um, don't forget to pray. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right way, and all will be added. God's going to bring you back to him. He's like bringing us back home, and on your way back home, you're letting go of all the knowledge and bad habits and all that stuff, and you're becoming as a child unto the Lord. I'm telling you, but you got to put him first. Get up early and pray. Be aware of him during the day. Don't get so caught up that you forget about him. And be grateful for all things. Keep your eyes open so you can learn to appreciate everything. And if you have a job, humble yourself on that job. Do what you promised to do. Don't worry about the money or the attitude or the boss. You made a promise. Stick to your promise, and God will reward that. 
I appreciate you tuning in and, and I appreciate your support. I also appreciate everybody here. I'm real grateful. Thank you so much for what you've done. We've been around for 24 years now, and it's because of people like you that we've been able to do it. All right? God bless you, and thank you for coming, and thank you for tuning in. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program, or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND. You're away from, you're away from.